Welcome to the kingdom of God. Really impressive, right? Come, consider the riches, the power, the glory, the gold gilding everywhere. God's kingdom. What is God's kingdom? This is our theme today, and also Happy Father's Day. To everybody who is a father, plays the role of a father, or has a father. Blessed Father's Day. Especially to Jim. Welcome to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of love, joy, peace, patience. Welcome to the quiet. feel how is your how does it feel in your body do you feel tense do you feel loose do you feel free do you feel good do you feel ill just notice how are your thoughts relaxed anxious worried irritated just notice Take a breath and see if you can't let go just a little bit for a little while and enjoy the love, joy, peace, and patience and kindness of the kingdom of God in this place at this time. We're going to learn a song together. It is called... The Seeds of Grace, right? Seeds of Grace.
Please rise if you're able. We remember the promise of baptism.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God is in you. And we are in God. God, your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your kingdom is unlike any kingdom we know. Your gentle reign of peace boundless love, compassion and overflowing mercy, steadfast faithfulness. All traits we long for to receive and to give. God, your kingdom is relation. Your presence your spirit
not forcing or controlling. defending. Not taking. But a world of harmony, which despite everything is also our world, our true nature, to live in harmony and in peace. Within your gentle reign, is truly real. We're in that section of Mark where it's one parable after another. And you wonder why, well, his disciples wonder why. He only speaks in parables, and they ask him that directly. And he says, so that seeing they won't see, and hearing they won't hear. But to those who come close, to you and those who come close, you can receive it. You can see it and you can hear it. And I would say further that I think parables are so important because they give us an image that we can chew on. And they speak of things that can't be quite exactly explained. And if they are, be suspicious. But a parable is elusive and elusive. And that's on purpose, like a poem, like a good poem that opens the more we spend time considering it, pointing to something beyond itself, well beyond itself but passing on an image that can be received and then hopefully experienced. Yeshua said, the kingdom of God is if someone is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep that night and the seed would sprout and grow. And he doesn't know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. And he also said, 
With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all seeds on earth. And yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth its branches so that birds of the air can make their nest in its shade. The Gospel of God. Yeshua referred to himself most commonly as the Son of Man, which is an image from the book of Daniel, and literally it means Son of Humanity. In other words, he wanted to stress that he was a human being like all other human beings. The tradition quickly lost sight of that in its own search for primacy and glory and all the things that organizations often do, and disciples of great teachers often do, falling into a squabble over who's the greatest, as we see happens in the story of Jesus among his disciples. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? And then he picks up a little child and he says, unless you turn and become like a little child, and whoever among you wants to be first, you need to make yourself last and servant of all, turning all the conventional notions on themselves. Yeshua also referred to himself more rarely as the Son of God. Now the problem within our tradition has been that that has been taken as straight up, rather than the satire and sarcasm that it was meant to be. Because in that day, there was another son of God. And that son of God was declared son of God on every Roman coin. Caesar Augustus, son of God. Now that's a real king right there. With real armies and real treasures and real power to kill anybody. A real king, a real emperor. It was ordinary, ordinary thinking in those days to associate God or the gods with kings and queens, with monarchs with empire, and with kingdom. It was that way in Egypt, where the pharaohs claimed the divine connection and divine right and the divine blessing of their rule. It was that way in Persia. It was that way for a long time in Israel. King David, King Saul, King Hezekiah, and so forth, Josiah, and so on. All believed to be like this with God's rule. Except for the prophets. Now those pesky prophets kept popping up and saying, no, 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 and the emperor has no clothes. And they would often get killed, or at least run out of town. 
in that tradition, that tradition of Israel's prophecy, Jesus comes along. And is saying the emperor has no clothes, both to Rome, which eventually does kill him, and to Israel, to his sisters and brothers in Israel, many of whom are expecting and hoping for a messianic appearance. Some are even associating it with him that will restore the glory of the former glory of the kingdom of Israel. You know, with armies and borders and treasury and conscription. and hierarchy. And laws, and hopefully some justice, and hopefully some measure of peace. But our kingdoms, aren't they, are always a mixed bag. And I don't care whether you call it a kingdom, or an empire, or a nation. Whatever human system, Whatever human system is always a mix. But that tradition, even despite Jesus, <laughs> despite Jesus, but in the name of Jesus, kingdoms have arisen and claim to be blessed by God. right up to the present day if you happen to watch the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II and heard the words of the Archbishop of Canterbury claiming the blessing of the rule of God. Can the kingdom of God be present within any of that? Sure. But it's not that. And I think Yeshua could not be clearer about it. Saying things like, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? To the kingdom of David? To the Holy Roman Empire? To any church body? To what? Shall we compare it? It is like a mustard seed. It is like leaven in a lump of dough. You must turn and become like children if you would like to enter it. God reveals God's self in truth and light and love. Not to the high and the mighty or even the wise of this world but to those who turn and become servant of all, to those who turn and become like little children. To those who understand that there is no human empire that will outlast the life of the mustard seed. which grows of its own in perfect harmony with its environment.
and gives benefit to the soil, nourishes the soil, even heals the soil, is nourishing and healing and also delicious for human beings. And as it gives, it recreates itself. This is genuine power, not power over, but power within, the very power of life itself, the life you and I all have and experience until we try to grab on to it, until we try to control it, until we try to claim it as our own, and we've lost it. We need to go searching for it, like that merchant in search of the one pearl of great price, who searches and searches, and then, when he finds it, goes and sells everything he has to obtain that one pearl. This is worth everything. This kingdom of God, which is no kingdom like any kingdom we know, this reign of God, this relationship is worth more than everything else. And it is known by its fruit. Yeshua said, the kingdom of God has come near. What? The kingdom of God comes near? Then he says, the kingdom of God is within you. What? And then he says, the kingdom of God is among you. It is known by its fruit. And that fruit is love, joy, and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, self-control. Anyone, anywhere, anytime can experience this kingdom. It's not possessed of anyone. It is an everlasting kingdom. Available always here. And now, and then here, 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 and now, forever. It's a feeling kind of like it's a stay.
The hymn of the day is, uh, the words are on the back of the bulletin, um, but the hymn tune is 644. Please rise for the prayers of the people. <coughs> Gracious God, we earnestly pray for peace, and let it begin with us. We pray for peace where there is war and so many are dying and being wounded, and we pray for peace. For the end to shooting wars. And for bonds of kindness to prevail. God, in your mercy, For those who are hungry, may we feed them. May others feed them. May they learn to feed themselves. May we find each other in the context of our mutual needs, God in your mercy. We pray for those who are graduating, those who are celebrating this special day, we pray for those who are experiencing the joy of life in any way, that their sweetness may be contagious. God, in your mercy. And for this nation, for healing, may we find each other rather than resist each other. God, in your mercy, we remember these people, these situations we name now aloud or in our hearts. We pray for Sue Murphy the loss of her nephew and the Murphy family. Strengthen them in their sadness and fill them with love toward one another. God, in your mercy. Hear 
our prayer. God, beyond all words and images, beyond all thoughts and beyond all comprehension, we give thanks that we know you by experience as we experience this life. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your great mercy through Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. We share that. rise for the Holy Communion. Oops. Right. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, gave it to his friends, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, 
He gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is the covenant in my blood shed for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sin. Do this and remember me. table is prepared and all are welcome.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep us in his grace. thank everyone for being here today. We don't take attendance and uh, you don't fail if you don't come. But thank you, those of you on Zoom, those of you who come, thanks for showing up. And thanks for showing up in all the ways you show up. So many ways. And helping us experience the kingdom of God among us. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be gone this week and next Sunday. Pastor Walt is going to uh, preside and preach. Um, and um, Andrea and I will be uh, on the road starting tomorrow. We're going to drive out to Glacier National Park. Um, and yeah. We're looking forward to it because it's kind of a family reunion. Some cousins on my dad's side live out west, and they're, we're going to see them for a couple of days. But we're also staying uh, on Flathead Lake, which is actually where she and I became friends on a church youth group trip. We hadn't really known each other before that, so that's where we became friends, way back in high school, and we haven't been there since. So we're looking forward to that. Um, Tuesday, uh, community meal, pay what you can, pre-orders appreciated. Um, in the evening, and there's uh, free sewing. If you need some sewing done, come and Bronwyn will sew your clothes just because Bronwyn's great and loves to sew. So uh, that's the kind of community that we're engendering and experiencing and gathering and so forth. Thursday, of course, will be our food giveaway and I believe there will also be a food giveaway and open market on the 4th of July. So um, that's, that's a Thursday and um, you know, a lot of people in our community will not be gathering with their families because they don't have family, you know. So, anyway, we huh? We we'll be the family, the family on the 4th of July, right? And I hope there will be fireworks uh, in the front yard. Oh, big ones. Bigger the better. Big. Human, human fireworks. <laughs> human fireworks. Dancing, <laughs> dancing. We'll just dance. Yeah. There we go. Um, any other announcements? What am I forgetting? I am finally Always. doing this. Oh, <laughs> the one time I forget. After, after weekly announcements. Yeah. It's it, it really creating great anticipation in my life. So uh, from 6 to 6.45, should you be in your vicinity, um, having a, a you know, body-mind uh, session. Probably Alexander again. You know, if you've never experienced it, it's easy. It doesn't require it. You just lay down on the floor and kind of follow the directions. It's good for you. It's good for you. Yeah, show up, show up. Uh, yeah, the one time I don't announce it as being this week. Who else? Birthday. No. Uh, garden, guns to garden tools next Saturday at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, and a whole bunch of uh, organizations are taking part. But there will be a forge and a blacksmith there. And actually, they're inviting people to bring guns and have them melted down and made into garden tools. So, uh, like that scripture, swords into plowshares. So, um, anyway, the information, I think, is out. It's on the back door. On the, there's information on the back. I think it's 12, I think it's noon to 3 and lunch is provided. Uh, and if you've never seen, you know, uh, Metal being melted down, you know, in a forge, it's pretty cool, uh, and then fashioned into something else. So, 
And gun locks, free gun locks, okay. Yeah, this has got to be several organizations together, putting this together. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, is there any birthdays? Seeing none, let us sing the garden song. Come on, you want to sing this. If you noticed, where'd it go? There it is. This has been your one of your favorite songs since you were a kid. Stand up. <laughs> Inch by inch, row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Pulling weeds and... Oh, sorry, sorry, my fault. <laughs> I, sorry, let's take it from the top of the house. From the top. I never learned, I never knew this song before, so... You didn't? No. I, I never saw the Muppets, but here we go. Inch by inch, row by row. God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us, and may God's countenance be lifted up upon us, giving us peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, love in the world. Amen.